You're listening to the Remote Millionaires Podcast, the show for aspiring and established entrepreneurs who want to create and scale six-figure success online without being chained to a job, location, or computer. I'm your host, Tom Gaddis. Let's dive in. Hey, aloha, Tom Gaddis here, and welcome to another episode of the Remote Millionaires Podcast. Excited you join me today. I'm going to be covering a question that we get all the time, in, in sometimes in different forms, but it almost always comes down to this. What is the best niche to target if you're trying to build a remote uh, digital marketing agency? And what service is the best service to offer? Maybe you're thinking these same questions if you're trying to get going in this business or maybe you've tried some niches and some services and nothing's been able to get traction. So you're wondering which one is the best? What, where is the best place to start? Well, on this episode, I'm going to answer those questions. And I can tell you right off the bat, I'm just going to pull the Band-Aid off as quick as I possibly can because I have watched thousands of students come through our community. They are in all kinds of niches. They all offer different kinds of services and they have success. So I can confidently say there is no magic niche and there is no magic service that will make you successful. There, the Band-Aid has been ripped off. If that's what you came to this episode searching for, well, you're not going to find it here because there is no magic niche. There is no magic service. Achieving success, building a remote digital marketing agency comes down to systems and processes. And more importantly, doing the revenue producing activity of prospecting and selling potential clients every day. That's it. If we do those things and we do them consistently and we strive to get better at them so that we do them well, it really doesn't matter what niche we target, doesn't matter what service we're leading with, we'll be able to find success. Now, that being said, there are some considerations based on your situation, again, after watching thousands of students try to get up and have success and do things that I've, that I've seen that will make a difference. They're not the secret, right? It's not the thing that's gonna make you have success, but there are things you should consider based on maybe where you're at or what you're doing on uh, how you proceed. So let's talk about the niche first, all right? So what are the things we need to consider when we're looking at what niche to go after? And by the way, at the end of this episode, I'm going to talk about what I call the power of one, which is how you implement all of this stuff effectively. And I should let you know also that at our agency, we target uh, a lot of different niches. We do not target one specific niche and we offer five different services. And we'll talk a little bit about that and how we got there as well. The secret is the power of one, which I'll get into at the end of this episode, an open loop for all you copywriters out there. So let's talk about the niche. What are some considerations when you're trying to decide what niche to go into? Well, first, what is your, like, where are you at? Are you brand new? Have you never had a client? Or... Have you gotten some traction? Have you had some clients? Do you currently have clients? Like those are things that you want to consider. Are you currently in a niche? Right? So if you're new, what do you do? Well, if you're new, I would recommend that you stay away from uh, niches like attorneys, uh, dentists, doctors, Oftentimes you'll see the quote gurus out there promoting these as the big money niches, right? The big money niches. And they can be the big money niches. There is a lot of money flowing around for marketing services in those niches, but they are highly competitive and the markets 
are very sophisticated, meaning the businesses themselves know a lot about what they need and what it entails. They're savvy. They're smart. So if you're new and you're calling those businesses up and you don't know your stuff inside and out, and you don't have the confidence that you're an expert in what you're doing, it can be a real challenge to bring those clients in. And if you've never worked with anyone in that niche before or have any experience to show them, you're fighting a very big uphill battle. So my recommendation would be that you start in a niche that's some niches that are easier. So for us, that's the home services niches. And we are still in the home services niches. We get home service clients all the time. They're some of the best ones to work with. We have a lot of uh, other high ticket you know, niches as well. We love working with them too. We've never really abandoned home services, but it's a really good niche to start if you're getting, uh, if you're just getting started because the businesses there tend to know they need help. They don't have time to do it themselves. They're looking for somebody to just do it and they can be a lot easier to work with, right? They just want to hand it off to somebody. They're busy running their business. You know, they want you to handle all that marketing and technical stuff. So you can typically uh, have a better chance of talking directly to the owners of these businesses. You can typically uh, find that they really need your help. The problems that they have are pretty glaring. They usually know they have problems. They just haven't found somebody who can help them fix those things. So they know they need help, right? So my recommendation would be that you start in a niche like that. And then as you build your competence and you get some experience, then if you want to go target these higher, uh, high, you know, these more sophisticated niches, the ones that have more money flying around, do it. But, you know, maybe cut your teeth in something that's going to give you a little more traction and help you to get that, that stuff going, right? All right. So let's talk about the service that you offer. So we've talked about the niche, right? We've talked about the niche. And uh, now let's talk about the service that you want to offer that niche. So a couple of considerations to think about. There are two kinds of services out there. So I mentioned at our agency, we offer five services. We offer website design. We offer search engine optimization. We offer social media management. We offer pay per click advertising, paid ads, and we offer reputation management. We don't do a lot of reputation management on its own. That mainly comes in as some of our marketing package deals. We do uh, a lot of uh, websites, a lot of PPC, a lot of SEO. Social media management, a bit, but not as much as SEO and, and PPC. So why did we pick those services? And more importantly, which one did we start with first, right? Like we didn't just roll out of bed offering those five services. We've built those five services in our agency over time, which brings me back to the power of one, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but we'll get into more details that. So here's the main difference between those five services. Some are activity-based and some are results-based. So activity-based services are things like websites. When somebody hires you to build a website, they pay you money, you build the website, and the transaction is completed. If no one ever finds that website, that is not your responsibility, right? You did what you were paid to do, which was build the website. Social media management is another activity-based service. They pay you normally to make posts on their social media on various days and at various times. And so you're paid to do the activity. When you do the activity, they give you the check. You can say, look, I made the post Monday through Friday. This is what you're paying me to do. So they see that, right? The engagement, things like that aren't as tied into what you're doing. It's activity-based. Search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising. Those are results-based services. When somebody pays you to do search engine optimization, they expect to show up higher in the Google search results. And when they don't, they're on the phone asking you what the heck's going on. Pay-per-click ads. When somebody's paying to run ads, they expect those ads to be profitable for them. If they're not, then you have an issue. So what's the difference between these two? And again, you want to take into consideration where you're at. If you again, are newer to this industry and you haven't really had a lot of clients, you don't have a lot of experience, you want to stick with activity-based 
services. They're just easier to manage. It can be easier to deal with clients and their expectations. The results-based services, while they can be very lucrative and oftentimes are recurring payments, which is what a lot of people want, you're handling the client's expectations and dealing with clients in general. It just, it takes more. You have to be a little better at it. So again, I would recommend that you cut your teeth, get your experience on some activity-based services, and then work in the results-based services. That's what we did. We started with websites, an activity-based service. And as we got good at doing websites, and we started getting consistent work with websites, we started looking at, well, how can we continue to uh, bring value to these clients and grow our revenue? Well, a natural extension of a website, once you build a website, is they want people to get there. They want traffic. So that led us into SEO. And then that led us into pay-per-click and social media management and those things, right? So we were selling a one-time service at first, but then we were able to go back and add recurring services after. We've built up trust. We have a great, you know, we do great work on our website. So the clients really believe in us. So when we come to them with the result-based services, they want to work with us. They want us to help them. So for us, that model has worked the best. But you can start, you know, you don't have to start with websites. You can start with whatever you want. You can start with whatever you want. So this brings me to the power of one. You have to start somewhere and you really have to start with one. So the power of one means you pick one niche, you pick one service, you pick one offer, you pick one prospecting method. You work on that one thing until it's consistently bringing in revenue. And then you start to expand out and add other things. Maybe you add another prospecting method. Maybe you uh, at, come up with another offer for the same niche, the same service, but you start rolling that only after the first offer has proven to be successful. Then once you have that going, then you start looking at how you can add in other services and other things into your agency. Again, like I said, we have five things, but we didn't start offering them all at once. They've come over time. We started with websites. When we got good at that, then we brought in SEO. Then we brought in social media management. Then we brought in pay-per-click. That has allowed us to get good and bring in cash on all those services. And then once we know they're working and, and, and we have it under control, then we bring on the other responsibility. One of the biggest mistakes we see people make is trying to do too much at one time. You really just have to focus on one thing at a time, the power of one. It really works. And if you do that, you'll feel like you're moving slow. You'll definitely feel like you're moving slower than everyone else around you. But eventually, you will start having way more success than them because they're trying to do too much and it's not sustainable. Whereas you do one thing at a time and then you move to the next. The next one, move to the next, move to the next. Before you know it, before you know it, you you have a, an agency that's, humming along and you're offering five different services, but you didn't start there. So that's the power of one. Look, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Remote Millionaires Podcast. I really love putting these together for you and I would appreciate it if you'd go to wherever you listen to this podcast and leave me a review. If you have any ideas or suggestions on how I can make the show better for you, I'd love to hear that as well. You can email me, tom at offlinesharks.com. Just shoot me an email. Let me know. I would love to hear from you. Tom at offlinesharks.com. You can find the show notes, anything about this episode at uh, remotemillionaires.com forward slash podcast. I have a great episode planned next week that's going to go a little deeper and in a different way on this exact same subject of service and niche. So please tune in then. Uh, the podcast come out every Thursday. Again, a review, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you next Thursday on another episode of the Remote Millionaires Podcast. Hey, if what you've heard today on the Remote Millionaires Podcast resonates with you and you want to continue the conversation, then I want to personally invite you to head over to remotemillionaires.com and schedule your free Remote Millionaires business development call. We will analyze your business and show you exactly how to accelerate your results and build a wildly successful business you can run from anywhere. Until next time, Tom Gaddis, signing off.